This is Marlo Marcy from Love and Hope. We want to welcome you back to Keeping It Real with God. We're going to start out with the Lord's Prayer as we do every day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. From thy is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, today we're going to dive right into temptation leads to destruction. Distraction. Oh. Temptation leads to distraction. <laughs> In a way. <laughs> I guess it leads to destruction It, it leads too, to destruction it? too, yeah. And destruction becomes a distraction. Uh, it's a, it's a, it goes hand in hand. Pretty they much. really do. All right. First Corinthians seven thirty five. I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. So basically, following this, first of all, it's just all of our attention and devotion should be on the Lord, the Lord alone, and that mm -hmm. leads to it. Anything that is a temptation of any kind becomes a distraction from God. Yeah. It, it is that in general. Everything distracts you from your purpose and your purpose should be to serve the Lord alone. To me, it, it seems that simple now. It's not though. For, for me. Um, and I know it's not. I know it's not that simple. No. Um, I spent a big chunk of my life um, going through several things, being tempted in several different ways. Um, was it a distraction? A very, very big distraction uh, uh, through my life. Um, you, I had spurts of really good things and then distraction and then really good things and then more distraction um, that led to temptation uh, on a bunch of different accounts um, from alcohol to cussing all the time to you know put myself out there um, with other people uh, just it's they go hand in hand they really do um, every every one of us faces temptations and if we look at the scripture we see several times that temptations you know were listed in the Bible uh, Esau gave up his birthright for stew Samson lost his anointment to God because of a woman, Delilah. Uh, Saul lost his kingship because of cattle. Uh, there was a prophet whose servant lost his calling because of silver and clothing. Not to mention what we all lost due to an apple. We, we know yeah. how that story went. Yeah. So, you know, temptation is a distraction. It is Satan, the God, from our Lord and Savior. He's distracting us from God, our Lord and Savior. Uh, he's just distracting us from finding ourselves, finding out unconditional love, how to truly be there for people, how to help guide people through their lives, how to help people overcome things in their lives. I mean, there's so many different different ways you can spin it. And one of them things, you know, if we're not paying attention to the distraction, um, <laughs> I guess that's it. I mean, if we don't, we just have yeah. to avoid the distractions. We have to not pay attention to them. Yeah. We have to try to keep our focus straight ahead on what's important. And. I, and not every time does distraction, you know, these distractions affect us. You know, a lot of times people, you know, you can still stay on the right track. Um, Jesus was tempted three times in the desert by Satan. He never allowed these distractions to take over. Jesus is a little different than the rest of us. He may have been man, but he, yeah. was, he a was a lot, lot better man than any of us. Yes. But... Even in our lives, um, but in the Bible, you have Job. Uh, Satan actually, you know, if you know the story, he made the deal with God that you know to allow him to tempt Job, to distract him, basically, 
let me you know do these things to him and I you know to cause him to lose his faith in God and Let God see agreed. What his, his loyalty is. God, God agreed to let him test him, and he was, you know, plagued with awful disasters. You know, his everything he held dear to himself, he lost. You know, his family pretty much. His wife was all he didn't lose. He lost his children, his servants, all of his property. He lost everything. Wow. Um, and even his wife, you know, tried to convince him. To turn his back on God, you know, God has forsaken you. Why are you still, are you still supporting him? Yeah. And he never, he never allowed it to distract him. And in the end, he was rewarded <clears throat> greatly. God rewarded him greatly for his loyalty to him. I, and, and and definitely in that sense, that's where your faith comes in. That's where your strength come in for God. That He's gonna find a way to keep you on the path. That he's going to break through with you. He's going to guide you all the way through it. The thing is, we have to stick with it. Even in our tough times, heartbreaking times, painful times. He is with us. God's always with us, no matter what. No matter what. And that's what we have to remember. Amen. He's right there with us. He's he's going to help us through. He opens the doors for us to walk on in. You just have to do it. Yeah. You know, it, and that's the thing, like with Job. You know, these were trials that he was given. You know, tests. But when you really look at it, what were these tests? They were all temptations. If we make it bad on you... Will you turn away? Tempting him to go another way. To turn his back. They all fall under temptations. He's trying to tempt him. To distract him from God. It didn't work. You know, Not every temptation we experience. Are, are big temptations like this. There are little ones you too. Know, there's lots and lots of little temptations. Um, that try to keep us from doing or thinking what we should be doing. So I guess that would be uh, the six types of temptations. We have six types. Uh, natural temptations, human desires for acceptance, sex, food, and more. Any type of natural things that you're tempted by, things that follow your natural human instincts, human instincts yeah. of, that you, your wants and things that you think you need and things you think you deserve. Yeah. Just because we're human, those type of things. Uh, inf influential. <laughs> influential. Influ influential. <laughs> temptation. temptation. Others trying to lead you through temptation. That could be anything. Friends trying to convince you to do things with them. You know, hey, it'll be fun. Let's just go do this. Let's go do that. There's nothing wrong with it. You're, they're using their influence. It can be friends, it can be someone in a more powerful position than you, using their influence that way yeah. to try to keep you from getting ahead, basically. They're trying to tempt you to do things you shouldn't. Uh, number three, promotion temptation. Being offered great things for doing what you know to be wrong. And that could be the same thing. You know, you're offered... A better job, a better position, you know, just anything even from, like we said before, this could be friends as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get you this, I can get you something great, all you have to do is this for me. You know, it, you're all being offered something bigger for doing something you know you shouldn't do. Persistent temptation, uh, the temptation being put in front of you of your day after day anything you have um, maybe it's something in your job you know that you've been really wanting to move up and they keep waving it in front of you but they're what you know wanting you to do something for them to get it or something in your life somebody wanting you to do something mm -hmm. maybe there's something that you know you've wanted forever you know and it's constantly every day you see it over and over and over and more Some, and more you want it that temptation to to steal it or yeah. 
take it or yeah, I could just take go it. for There's it or no, do yeah. it. Just go ahead know. and do it. It's nobody, you know, it's right here. And they just wave it in front of you over and over and over again. Um, the perfect setting temptation. The perfect scenario for you to be lured by temptation. And that could be especially for like a sexual temptation. You know, being lured by candlelight or just a romantic moods you know any kind of setting something to try to lure you in mm -hmm. you know it's they set up that perfect scenario of a temptation to to make you want to come to them or do whatever they want you to do and the isolation temptation no one is around to see what to see you or catch you and that could be that the person trying to get you to do something has you isolated alone with them not just yeah. you by yourself where you think oh but nobody would see me do this it could be someone trying to tempt you into doing something and they have you alone so there's nobody around they you know they have you to themselves to do whatever they want say whatever they want to you to try to lure you in to whatever it is that they're wanting you to do whether yeah. that's you know committing a crime or it's something small or you know, like we said a sexual act whatever somebody trying to lure you just by having you isolated away from them yeah so we have in uh, first Corinthians. first corinthians see i can't talk either tonight first mm -hmm. corinthians 10 13 no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and god is faithful he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. And, and see, what that tells me is you have to ask for his help. Ask for the strength to get through it, to fight through the temptation, to work through it. You know, he, he like I said before, he wants you to ask for his help. He wants to help us. But if we're not asking for his help or asking him for guidance it's just not going to show up like that you know we have for one we have to give ourselves completely to him you know center heart to mind mind to heart soul ask he's waiting our lord and savior is waiting for us all his children to come back to him and that's the thing with the temptation leading to distraction Satan's waiting too that's the problem and yes. that starts from a very young age you know the slightest little thing convincing a, a little kid to steal a piece of candy just a little piece of bubble gum it's just this it's just that and those temptations become more and more as you get older and older you've allowed it you've allowed it to happen now you feel like you get by with it and oh, nothing happened I'm not gonna be punished nothing happened I didn't get caught I no. won't get caught this time and those temptations become bigger and bigger temptations it's not a piece of candy now it's the whole candy bar and on up you know bigger things oh just a small toy to a big toy you know yeah. and if you continue to allow it he's he's running rampant with this at this point he's got you he just keeps throwing a little bit bigger temptation at you all the time. Yeah. Which becomes a bigger and bigger distraction away from God. He's leading you farther and farther away. Away from God. All these little things start to build up and build up and build up. Next thing you know, you're you're just busy as can be getting with everything. Satan. Oh yeah, getting everything that you think you want and that you deserve and living the life because you've got all these big great things that you've been able to get. And the whole time, all he's doing is just keeping you occupied. Yep. All these temptations, it sounds great, and oh, you're living the life, and you've got everything you ever wanted. You do here. On this earth. But like they say, you can't take them with you, so it's not doing you a lot of good. You get maybe a hundred years of enjoying that here. <laughs> if that. And that's, if you're lucky but what do you get after that and that's the None thing of that 
we're looking for the end game. Well, they say it's not not checkers, it's chess. Mm -hmm. The end game is to be yeah. with God, our Lord and Savior. I mean, He's calling us right now. This world, our world, is in just such a rut. Left and right, there's so many things that are going wrong, and we need to wake up. And even our, our politicians, our media, they try to, they distract us. Yeah. These are all temptations. All these stories they tell are temptations to distract us. Everything's a distraction from what they're trying to do behind the scenes. Things that they're trying to pass through that are unethical, immoral, totally against God. You know, if you pay attention to what actually is happening with laws that are being passed when anything big happens in the media that ca causes everyone to draw their attention to that you need to look behind the scenes a little tighter or a little closer yeah well, what are you guys trying to do what's really happening behind the scenes that you people are trying to hide from us by keeping us occupied what, what are you trying to avoid because that's our problem. Our government, so many of them are so crooked. So many things are happening that are against God. They're trying to pass so many laws that are completely yeah. against God. And they're putting us in a place where <laughs> wanting us to follow them. Yeah. You're going to have to you have to make a choice. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to you're going to do good or you're going to do bad? Are, yeah. you, are you against God or are you with God? You know, I, I and I don't dive in a lot into politics. And, but I guess the thing is, I had someone tell me the other day, they were talking about, you know, with our elections, that there's a push for a $15 an hour minimum wage. That's a temptation and a distraction. Is all that is because yeah. that sounds great I would love for everybody to fall under a $15 an hour minimum wage for people to have a living wage where people didn't struggle like they do to feed their families and keep a roof over their heads but that's the sugar coating on top of what else they're trying to pass that is against this against God Oh, we'll give you $15 an hour, but we also want to legalize full-term abortion where up until the minute that baby's born, we have the right to kill it. Not cool. <laughs> so, you have to look underneath. They're, they offer these good things that they push. You know, we can do this for you. We can do that for you. That's fine, but what do, what do they expect us to give up for that? They expect us to give up the lives of our own children? That it's okay to do that? It's not okay. You have to pay attention. Keep your focus on God. Amen. Put Jesus Christ first. It's the only way to heaven. And you know, for a long time they talked about, you heard so many people, they wore the little bracelets and all that. You know, the WWJD. What would Jesus do? I remember that. I hadn't seen those Think in about so long. that. When something doesn't seem right to you, that's what you need to think. Well, what would Jesus do? Would Jesus do this? Would Jesus support this? Because if he wouldn't, then we shouldn't either. Yeah. That was the whole point, was for you to live like Jesus, as close as you can to him. And when you're supporting things that Jesus wouldn't support, then you're living completely against the Bible, against God's Word. And that's where they're leading us. They're trying so hard to lead us down the wrong path. They're, yeah. leading the, they're trying to lead the sheep to slaughter is what they're trying to do. All of Jesus' sheep, they're trying to lead us right to their slaughter. And it's working for so many. We see it every day in the news around us. Yes. You know, you. 
I'm all for peaceful protests, like I've said before. But when they get out here and they're burning stuff and they're destroying stuff and they're shooting people and... There's no need no. for that. There's no need for no violence at all, first of all. You're supposed to stand up for what's right. They didn't say shoot somebody because you don't agree with them, though. That's not that's not what the Bible says. Peaceful yeah, no, protests are uh, what you should, should do. Nobody should be shooting nobody. You should be that's using legislation. Thing. You know, yes, the protests are great. They are a good thing. But it's getting out of hand, and everybody just seems to think that it's okay. It's okay. It'll be okay. No, it's not going to be okay. None of it's okay at all. We're watching the end of times wrap up around us on a daily basis. Yeah. It's coming closer and closer. I will get right with your Lord. We all need to be, make sure we are right with our Lord. Every day, pray, talk to Him, spend your time with Him. Spend your time trying I, to show your friends and your loved ones the way. Share God's Word with them. Yeah. We don't want to lose anyone. We would love for everybody to be able to spend eternity in heaven. I know you do too. You don't want to see anybody. Your friends, your family, your sons, your daughters, your parents, brothers, sisters. Aunts, uncles, everybody. cousins. Everybody. I don't care if it's a stranger on the street. But give it everything you have to guide them. Teach them God's word. Show them the way. He can come anytime. He can come before we're done here. We don't know. Yeah. So. Everybody take the time out. Take your time. Slow down. Say no to Satan's distractions and temptations. We're going 100 miles an hour out there. and On a blind curve. Yeah. That's the distraction. He keeps us busy. He tries to keep us busy anyway. Everything. Work. You're constantly having to do things to survive. Yeah, run here, run there. Making it harder and harder for you on your job where it distracts you more and more. Having to put in more and more hours yeah. just to survive. There's too many distractions. Take the time to just... You don't have to sit down and say a 20-minute prayer ten times a day but take the time during the day for the little things thank you God for, for this for that you know I, I need your help right now yeah you know, I can't do it without you it's that simple God help me three little words any time of the day you don't even have to say them out loud he hears them he knows them you don't have to say lots of big prayers during the day but just those few little words noticing him and paying attention to him acknowledging him during your day asking for help praising him thanking him yeah because the more you do that the more you're saying no to satan and not allowing him to distract you so, i think we've covered everything we've got tonight I feel like we have um Thank you all for joining us here at Love and Hope. It's keeping it real with God. We also want to remind you we always accept prayer requests. You can send those to us at loveandhope333 at yahoo.com. The request is personal. We'll pray for that also. Um, God always knows the need. We'll wrap it up with a prayer as always. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to everyone and continue to pray with everyone. As our connection to you get deeper and our faith gets stronger with you, Lord, just watch over everyone and keep us all safe. In our Lord and Savior, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. Please like, subscribe, share this video with all your friends and family, and we hope that you'll join us again next time, and God bless.